Most welcome to Estonia Spanama, History Consens and C. Aaron Wetlands, U.S. Army Airmobile in the Vietnam War. The airmobility concept was not just a product of a Vietnam experience. It certainly had its roots in both the airborne techniques of World War II and the early doctrine for organic aviation for ground forces. However, a key decision can be said to be the U.S. Army's move to form 12 helicopter battalions on August 21, 1952. This key decision was made to commit the Army to air mobility, even though a practical troop-carrying helicopter was still unproven. So join us and watch the U.S. air mobile teams in the 1960s Vietnam. And please, subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you on board on our continuing journey in history. Operation Chopper was the first airmobile combat action in Vietnam, commencing in December 1961. On December 11, 1961, the USS Corps docked in Saigon with 32 US Army Piaseki H-21 helicopters and 400 crewmen of the 8th Transportation Company Light Helicopter and the 57th Transportation Company Light Helicopter. A little more than 12 days later, Operation Chopper commenced. The helicopters transported over 1,000 Army of the Republic of Vietnam paratroopers for an assault on a suspected Viet Cong stronghold 10 miles west of Saigon. The VC were surprised and soundly defeated. This operation heralded a new era of air mobility for the US Army, which had been slowly growing as a concept since the Army formed 12 helicopter battalions in 1952 as a result of the Korean War. The full power of our army cannot be brought to bear upon the enemy through ground operations alone. Probably no feat of the air mobile team is as spectacular or heartwarming to the fighting man as evacuation of the wounded by medical helicopter. The swift removal of wounded soldiers from remote battlefields and aerial delivery to modern hospital facilities has cut combat fatalities to an all-time low. It is no wonder that this life-saving capability of the Army Air Mobile Team is one of the major factors in sustaining the morale and fighting spirit of the soldier. Keeping the swarms of helicopters airborne so long and so often is made possible only because the team gives these aircraft expert maintenance on the ground. Checkups and inspection procedures are exacting and carried out according to a rigid schedule. After every combat mission, an inspection is made for possible damage. Another contributing factor to the capability of these helicopters to return so swiftly to action is the multiple fueling techniques devised by the team's ingenious support personnel. Inflatable rubber fuel tanks, flown well forward of the main airbase, cut refueling time to the bare minimum. On April 12, 1966, the most unusual Army Aviation Maintenance Battalion steamed into Cameron Bay. The unit was the 1st Transportation Corps Battalion, Depot Seaborne, the only floating helicopter maintenance facility in the Army. This was the USNS Corpus Christi Bay, a ship modified to carry approximately 370 Army maintenance personnel and supporting technicians, and 130 civilian maritime crewmen to operate the ship. Spectacular though the air mobile team's assaults are, these brilliant aerial deployments would grind to a halt on the ground if the troops were not constantly supplied and resupplied with the many articles of war needed to fight the battles. Things like jeeps and water trailers and ammunition. Spot delivery of mail. Communications equipment, small arms ammunition and food is a vital part of every operation. Pure fresh water supplies are as important as food, 
due to the fact that natural water sources in Vietnam are carriers of disease. One of the most outstanding aerial delivery feats, however, is the constant shuttling in of tons of heavy shells, which are consumed so rapidly by the forward artillery units. Another triumph of the Air Mobile team is its truly remarkable ability to shuttle artillery through the air. In Vietnam today, most aerial delivery of these field pieces is being accomplished by huge Chinook helicopter sling delivery. New lightweight howitzers have been developed especially for this role. From these forward battery positions, the artillery can not only support the troops moving up in the field, but can cover the landings of other battalion-sized units at nearby satellite landing zones. The self-sufficiency of the Air Mobile team is one of its most valuable assets. An example is the helicopter recovery of damaged aircraft. Since the wrecked aircraft is most often the victim of enemy action in the forward areas, these recovery operations are frequently carried out while the rescue ship itself is under fire. However, the men of the recovery teams are so skilled, so quick and so daring, that most aircraft shot down or forced down by accident are recovered, repaired, and are returned to combat duty again. Even the largest of our helicopters can be retrieved from wilderness crashes and whisked back to the capable hands of expert aircraft repairmen. In the fall of 1965, the newly designated 1st Cavalry Division Airmobile was preparing for deployment. The movement of over 400 aircraft, nearly 16,000 personnel and over 1,600 vehicles and training for combat in just eight weeks was a momentous task. The USS Boxer and three military sea transportation service ships had been designated to move the division. The 1st Cavalry Division had dispatched by Air Force Transport a 1,000-man advance party under the command of Brigadier General John M. Wright, Jr which arrived in Anke on August 27th, with security for the advance party provided by the 1st Brigade 101st Airborne. Troops are seated in each attack helicopter so that the first man off will be an automatic weapons man. If necessary, he will provide a heavy volume of fire to cover the offloading of the rest of his squad. The aerial deployment of assault troops may call for some modification of normal leadership tactics. On the ground, the company commander will be up forward. However, in the air like this, the command and control ship may well be the last one in formation. This gives the troop commander a clear view of his entire unit and allows him to break out of formation without disrupting it. In air mobile operations such as the one now underway, the hilltops overlooking an enemy held valley are pounded by army artillery units to make way for the incoming waves of helicopters. Artillery fire is carefully coordinated with attacks directly upon enemy positions by tactical aircraft of the U.S. Air Force. The jets rain bombs into the valley to neutralize the enemy there. When the fighter-bomber attack is masked by the advance of the ground troops, the close support is continued by helicopter gunships. Helicopter gunships lay down suppressive fire with 2.75 rockets and machine guns when required. Using the position-marking rockets of the helicopter as a guide, the Air Force jets dart in with their heavy ordnance. The Air Force counterpart of the Army Forward Observer is the FAC, the Forward Air Controller. Riding in Air Force spotter planes, the FAC can call in devastating jet airstrikes on enemy positions. The Air Force provides close air support until it can no longer attack the target without endangering our own troops.
The air mobility team system provides another great advantage for the assault troops. In addition to flexible, rapid transport to meet any maneuver of the enemy, the U.S. infantrymen can be landed on key terrain, such as this high ground overlooking the valley. Known as vertical envelopment, this enables him to come in behind the enemy, whose prepared defenses are usually oriented to cover the ground below. As the initial landings are completed without resistance from the enemy, the men spread out quickly to secure the various landing zones. Another advantage in landing atop high ground is that the assault forces are unable to attack downhill. This decreases fatigue and speeds up ground movement. The enemy is given little time in which to adjust his defenses to the attack. by well-disciplined fire from North Vietnamese army troops who have escaped the aerial attack by burrowing deep into their underground bunkers and tunnels. So it is all over. The Army Air Mobile Team has prevailed. The enemy has been defeated in this confrontation with the Americans at Bong San. One thing is clear. The battle-tested teams of infantry and armor, infantry and artillery, and the many other combined arms teams still play their historic roles in battle. But their missions are carried out faster and more effectively as part of the Army Air Mobility Team. That's all folks, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.